Building a TeamSpeak 3 plugin can be incredibly simple, assuming that you know what you're doing. First, let's start off by saying that when you go to the downloads page on TeamSpeak and you click the SDK area, you're going to notice there's a client SDK download and then there's a totally separate TeamSpeak SDK download. So the, these are definitely separate. It's important to note that the TeamSpeak SDK download is definitely separate from the client SDK download. Two different things here. What you're probably wanting to do is make a TeamSpeak 3 plugin. All right, if you're here, you're probably thinking, hey, I just want to compile a TeamSpeak 3 plugin and work on code and, and make things happen. Cool, that's this one. If you want to integrate TeamSpeak with the SDK into like your own game to where people can voice chat in your game, that's this one. You probably don't plan on making your own game though to integrate TeamSpeak into, but if you do, that's that guy and client plugins, uh, the client SDK is right here. So. We're gonna start off by simply clicking. It's important to also note that there's an update to the plugin API version to 23, that's five months ago. And what we're gonna do is just simply clone this. So I'm gonna simply click here to copy this text and I'm going to get clone right there. So if I LS, I can see that my TS3 client plugin SDK folder is here and we have a readme. So why not just cat the readme and see what it says? It informs you that the official helper repository that contains example code is right there. And, and so we've got that. This is what we're working with now. So to get started, we simply build upon the test plugin. Plugins are required to export special functions. And it's important to note also that if you want the SDK and, and you want to talk about the SDK, go into the form, ask questions, go download the SDK. The, the SDK and client plugins, I think, should be kind of talked of totally differently. Like, for example, they should just call the SDK the SDK, and then they should have the plugin kit. That's, that's my personal opinion, but they're not going to do that. They, they have it confusingly set up, and nobody understands. I get questions all the damn time. How do I build a plugin? Can you help me? Hey, will you build a plugin for me? Like it, it just is endless. All the questions I get about plugins with TeamSpeak, it's kind of annoying. Uh, not trying to tell anybody, hey, you're annoying about the TeamSpeak plugins because actually TeamSpeak is annoying and that's the root of the issue. But anyway, with that said, let's just go ahead and cat that make file and see what they've kind of got in there for us. We can see... They want things to uh, to kind of be run this way. So we can simply, let's say that we end up building a, a plugin, right? So this is in, intended to be used with GCC. And I'm going to go ahead and install GCC right now. And let's just do yes. So we've got the uh, the client SDK. We've already worked with the GitHub. We've cloned the GitHub. We don't need this anymore. I'll close this. Same thing. This is an important page. It's how to compile a plugin. This is an important page because we will run into an issue. And so with that said, this guy's talking about failing and we end up coming up with the solution to that. So we don't have to worry about the, the failing of this stuff. The how to compile a plugin. We do need this one. We already have this. This is the same thing and we don't need the GitHub anymore. This is important. I, I did look into make and make files. I've used them somewhat in the past, but I just wanted to be very clear in making this that I'm telling you all the right information. So if anybody is interested, go ahead and search up using make files and you'll, you'll see some good info there. I also deleted a folder on accident that I did not want to, <laughs> and I'm still slightly pissed off right now. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, I've had to recover files like on the fly on Linux before and it's always a nightmare. You got to like unmount your stuff. And at this point, I'm just saying, forget it. The files are gone. I don't care. But um, back on subject about how to compile a plugin. And yeah, the, these are the same. So I can close one of these. 
is there all we really have left? This guy, Peter S., he's part of the TeamSpeak team. He gives good information on compiling. So let's actually just navigate into the source file, or folder, I mean, and we're going to just follow his instructions. We're, we're going to run this. The first time through, we're probably going to get an error message saying it can't work. Uh, yep, so there's a fatal error. No such file or directory. That's where I Googled around for this, and I found this cool solution for going ahead and th throwing throwing this in there. We're just going to get this package, libc6dev. And this should this should work for us. So now if I rerun that prior command, the GCC to compile the plugin, we'll see that comes out and we're going to ls. So we've got our plugin.o file here and now they're telling us to copy this and paste this in. And now if we do an ls we see that our TS3 plugin is right here. And they're telling us to copy the lib my TS3 plugin to the plugins directory of our TS3 install and to run the TS3. Yeah, just simply run TS3 and then enable the new plugin. Additionally, this individual, Peter S, has talked about the make file and utilizing it. So for example, they have rm-rf and then they've got they've got this here. So it it seems like they kind of created their own make file with a couple examples in here, but basically when you go to run a make file, you'd basically just type make clean and that is showing that we simply need to install make. So that I've had this Obviously, when you're using a new system, you have to install everything. <laughs> so now we would type make clean. It's going to do something, which by the way is nothing because there's no .o files in here as, as we see, and there's no .so uh, test underscore plugin file. So what we can do instead is modify this make file, and we could say, for example, that we want to take out any of the source files that end in .o, right? So now if we go into CD source and we ls, you can see these the .o file, and we're gonna just type make clean, and then we're gonna go CD source, and you can see that it just cleaned out that, that .o file. So now we have just the .so file. It should be, it should be important to note, this will work, um, this definitely works compiling on Linux. You can also, you can read through on compiling further down on this. I will link this in the description. Um, this I will link in the description also in case you want to read it and this too. So hopefully this gives you all the information that you need to, to go ahead and create a plugin. Obviously, you probably don't want to use you probably don't want to use Nano to be working around in this. You totally could. You're more than welcome to. You can use Vim, Vi, Nano, whatever the heck you want. I personally would use Sublime. I love Sublime Editor. That is my favorite. That's my go-to. And I would probably launch... I would launch into just an Ubuntu desktop interface with Sublime and be editing around my code with that. And then you can just run your GCC to compile, you can set up your make file a little bit better. And by setting up your make file a little bit better, you'll be able to, to, to work through, to work through your stuff. So yeah, you can, you could run make all, let's try make all. There you go. So that, that actually did work then. And going back then, Okay, so yeah, I, I totally broke that. I See, I always go through things backwards, and when you go through things backwards, it ends up messing things up. So let's go back to let's go back to the make file and let's revert this back to what they had it as. And honestly, I don't even remember what they had it as, so I'm just gonna reclone this. And so I'm gonna rm-rf this, and we're gonna find that um, 
that get clone that I did. It's further back, further back, get, there it is. Okay, so if I do cd ts and I cat the make file, yep, so it's make all, I'll just run make all, there. So that's it, they, they do have a good working make file. I am silly and sometimes say the wrong things and I am also a human being. So that's how you compile a, a TeamSpeak 3 plugin. If anybody has questions, go ahead and ask, throw things down in the comments. But yeah, at this point you could literally go into your source and you can begin throwing around things with the, with the C, you can find that we'll say test in here quite a few times in various areas. So yeah, that's, uh, that's that. I believe also there is a way to throw things inside of like a, a TS3 plugin file. I can, uh, I'll, I'll throw that up real quick, hold on. Yeah, so from my understanding how a .ts3 underscore plugin file works is you throw your plugin file or plugin files inside of it and you, uh, by the way, it, you start off by creating a zip. So you just literally create a normal zip file. And once you, once you have your zip file, let me actually do a quick search on it. So there. So yeah, it's just a regular zip archive with a predefined structure. So that way you can have your package.ini file. Um, and then you've got the plugin subfolder with the actual uh, program modules that's going to be a .dll or .so. So yeah, that's that's kind of how this works out. If you if you have any questions about like, well, what about compiling for Windows or what about compiling this and that, just go ahead and ask. Throw things down in the comments. I plan to help out anybody in the TeamSpeak community that wants to work on plugins or compiling. And hell, if you want me to make a plugin for you, I can. I, I am fairly decent with coding. I'm a programmer as like, a, I guess, a hobbyist programmer, but I have made enterprise solutions. So I, I definitely can code. I enjoy it. It's a fun time to me. But I, I definitely don't want it to just like fill up in the comment section like, hey, can you just like program me a Batman control panel? Like, no, I'm, I'm not going to code you a Batman control panel. Um, you know, just be be reasonable. Use discretion when you're asking or typing things down in the comments because I am a human and I have time constraints just like you do. And that's that's pretty much it. But yeah, if you want to just kind of sift through this code, just kind of keep scrolling down. There's uh, there's definitely some lines to it. It's not too overwhelming. Let's uh let's go ahead and cat it out and get get a line count. So yeah, I mean you can you can definitely occupy yourself with that. Have fun. Hopefully everything works out well. And if like I said, if you have any questions or you want me to make another tutorial or video, whatever, just let me know. Thank you. Bye.